Welcome to another podcast uh, in Module 1, The Process of Conducting Research. In this particular podcast, we're going to look at some of the other uh, remaining uh, out learning outcomes. In the last podcast, we looked at the definition of educational research and the importance of educational research. Let's look now at the problems with educational research, discuss the process and uh, look at some of the ethical considerations and consider some of the skills that you bring to the research process. Uh, a lot of problems occur with research today. Uh, findings may be contradictory or vague. As a matter of fact, that's just the nature of statistics. It's very possible to take the same data set, and, uh, same population rather, and do it, do it collect the data set and come up with different results on the same questions and do it legitimately. Uh, sometimes the data can be questionable. Uh, we can have unclear statements about the intent of the study, or maybe we uh, don't fully disclose the data collection procedure, so we, a reader or a consumer would not know how that affects the outcomes. Or maybe the uh, research problem just wasn't, uh, re wasn't rendered clearly or articulately enough. Now, the process of research should really start with identifying the research problem to start with. Keep in mind that the very foundation is what is the research problem? That guides everything else. Once one has identified a research problem, then one conducts a review of the literature. And by literature, we are talking about literature uh, dealing with scholarly work regarding a problem. That might be journal articles, it might be a dissertation, that was done, but we're talking about peer-reviewed literature. Then once the literature is reviewed, one would determine what is the research purpose. It might be that the literature indicated that the purpose uh, was not really needed. It might be that the literature, a review of the literature, really caused a purpose to stand out and caused the study to narrow some. Once one has identified a problem, reviewed the literature, and determined the purpose of the study, then one can begin to collect the data. The data are then analyzed and interpreted. Uh, the findings are reported on and the research is evaluated. And we would be back in to increasing the body of knowledge into the particular research area. Now, the process of research of identifying the problem, you must specify a problem. You're going to have to justify that not only is there a perceived problem, but that the problem is worthy of study. And then you're going to suggest a need to study the problem for specific groups or specific audiences. A review of the literature is really quite complex. Uh, the books, journals, electronic resources, uh, among these the journals are considered kind of the top end of that, the scholarly peer-reviewed journals. And a lot of the electronic resources will have scholarly peer-reviewed journal materials available. Actually, one of the neat things about your university is the quality of the library resources. You're going to select the resources and organize the resources by developing a literature map, and I will help you with that. Then you're going to summarize the resources in a literature review. After you determine the literature, you're going to identify the purpose statement, the major intent of the study, the participants, the site, so forth, and you're going to narrow the purpose statement to determine whether you do a quantitative or qualitative study. The, the, the collect data, you're going to have to determine the data collection method. That's going to determine, be determined basically at least by the type of study you conduct, the type of research that you use. Select individuals, uh, design the data collection instruments, and outline uh, your procedures. You're going to have to pertain, obtain permissions to collect your data, and a lot of, and uh, that should include an institutional review board, uh, IRB, and then you're going to gather the data. Once we have gone through the data gathering process, then we have to analyze and interpret the data. That means that we're going to take the data apart. We're going to look at individual responses. We're going to do statistical analyses on that data, and we're going to represent information from the data. The information we may develop into tables, figures, pictures, other things like that, and then we're going to have to explain the conclusions that we have drawn from the data which we have gathered. 
Now, when we report the data, we're going to report the research and we're going to evaluate the research. Uh, when we report the research, of course, we're doing such things as considering the audience who would be appropriate for the report. Uh, we may select a certain specific peer journal that we would submit that. We may present our research in a, in a consortium gathering. We may go to a conference. We may read a paper. We might do a presentation. There are all sorts of things. We're going to have to structure the report, and we're going to have to write that report effectively which means uh, sensitively and accurately, we're going to have to reflect what the data have to say. Now, in the evaluation of the report, we're going to assess the quality of the research using recognized standards in a discipline. And the standards can come from the academic community, school districts, federal or state agencies. Now, there are some ethical considerations which we also must consider. One of the things we have to be certain that we do is respect the privacy rights of the participants and all of the rights of the participants. We have to honor the request and the restrictions of the research site. Those things uh, which uh, we have been directed that we can and cannot do, we must honor. And then we're going to report the research fully and honestly as we move on. There are a lot of skills that are needed for, to, that you need to bring to the table to do research. Uh, curiosity. I wonder how many of you are very curious people. Uh, that's what always got me in trouble. I had to know how something worked, what was going on with it, tear it apart. I just never was very good at putting it back together. You need a long and adequate attention span. Uh, research is not something that you do in five minutes, and then you're through. You're going to have to have library skills and computer resource skills, writing and editing skills. Now, in this course, what we're going to do are some very highly technological uh, writing and editing skills. So we're going to have some materials for you to look at. We're going to do them in a certain methodology, in a certain way, and we're certainly going to expect you to be affluent in your digital uh, skills.